It's Tuesday, which means it's time for another tutorial. I don't know why I looked at the mic there. Maybe that's because it's a lovely mic. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> it's Tuesday. Things have gone a little crazy in crypto. Let's bring it back down to something sensible. 20% fixed rate interest on your savings using UST, which is Terra's native stablecoin. We're going to dig into it now. So basically what we're going to do is have a look at Anchor Protocol. And if you saw yesterday's quick take, I was talking about how this basically takes a bunch of different DeFi things and packages them up into something that is very simple and very easy to gain exposure to. That's what we're gonna to do today. So if we go to anchorprotocol.com, you can see this lovely spinning cube here. That's kind of a nice thing. Got some lovely glass effects going on here. It says better savings. Better savings indeed. Anchor offers better yield, and effectively, we don't need to worry about any of this. Frictionless access, very nice. Uh, everybody loves frictionless access. And easier integration. So the idea behind Anchor is that it's, it's a really simple savings product, and you can integrate it into a wallet or into um, any kind of DeFi product that you have that's aggregating yield and everything else. Uh, let's say Arjun wants to put this into Arjun, pretty simple to do, or at least it should be. So what we need to do is go up to the right-hand corner here where it says web app, and that's gonna give us access to the saving component of Anchor. Now there's a bunch of other stuff you can do on Anchor, don't worry about any of that. We're just looking at fixed rate savings today. So here's the web app, and it's a really simple interface. You can deposit, and it'll tell you the APY over here, which is 22.39%. Now, I went in yesterday why the rate itself fluctuates and why the protocol is designed, if it does go above, to bring it back down, and if it does go below, to bring it back up. And given that Anchor only just launched, it's not surprising that the rate is a little bit high. And up here, we don't need to worry about borrow, bond, or govern. We'll get into those in a future video. But what we do want to worry about is this little button here which says connect wallet. And what we actually need to do is the same way that you would with MetaMask, we need to have a wallet that we can interact with the application. And we have to set that wallet up, but we also have to fund that wallet. So we're going to go into the different ways we can do that and specifically how we're going to do it today. So the way it works is Terra, which is the blockchain that Anchor is built on, is a high-speed, very fast, very cheap blockchain, and it has its own web wallet. And that web wallet is called TerraStation. It's a Chrome extension, and it's also a desktop application, but I'm using the Chrome extension because that's just the easiest way to interact with the protocol at the moment. And in order to gain access to the savings account, we also need the Terra native stablecoin, which is UST. Now, as fun as the fixed rate savings are, getting to the point where you can actually deposit funds just takes a little bit of time. So we're gonna go through the various different steps of what's involved in that and see what's actually going on. So we look at that um, Chrome extension. So that's the Terra station. And effectively what that is is a Terra wallet. It's being read by the app and that allows you to connect to the Anchor Protocol savings account, and that's exactly the same as MetaMask. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, there are a few different steps here. The, if you're coming from an Ethereum uh, wallet system and you understand how all that works, you're probably gonna be, you know, you're gonna have some ETH or you're gonna have a, a, an Ethereum ERC20 based token and you're gonna be very familiar with that, and suddenly you're confronted with this new blockchain, Terra. And you're like, how on earth do I get my assets from ETH onto Terra? And what happens if I send UST from ETH, an ERC20 version of UST, to Terra? Am I just gonna lose that money? Well, yes, is the short answer. But there's a very simple way in order to bridge assets from one blockchain to another. Now there's tons of layer one protocols building these bridges at the moment. Terra has their own one and we're gonna go into exactly how that works. But basically the fundamental principle is this. Ethereum is its own blockchain. It has assets on those blockchains. Assets on one chain can be represented on another chain uh, in various different ways. And those assets can then 
jump from one chain to another. And the reason you would want to do that is because, as we know, Ethereum gas prices at the moment are high, it's quite slow, and these layer one alternatives can do things that Ethereum simply can't. On the flip side, most of the liquidity in DeFi, in fact, all of the liquidity in DeFi, currently resides on Ethereum. So if you want to actually find buyers and sellers and find deep liquidity pools, that's where you have to be. So it's a trade-off. But the point is, all of these things are maturing. The access points for getting from one chain to another are becoming more and more mature and faster and easier to use. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this example here. So if we look on here, so I've gone to eth.mirror.finance, and this is effectively the ETH side of the bridge for Mirror, which is effectively a um, yield farming and staking component of Terra. And we're going to use that to help us get assets from Ethereum onto Terra. Now, there's an, an almost exactly parallel version of this site, which is uh, terra.mirror.finance. And that's doing exactly the same thing. And that's the Terra side of this. So you've got an ETH side and a Terra side. And what you want to do is you want to basically get your assets from the ETH side to the Mirror side. Fortunately, it's very, very easy to do this. So first things first, let's break it down. We want to download and install the Terra browser extension. So you find this in the Chrome Web Store. It's called Terra Station. It's in the productivity section. And it's very, very simple. I've actually got it installed on Chrome already. And there it is. And I've got a lovely amount of MSLV, which is a, the mirror version of silver. So I have a, a synthetic stock sitting in there that I bought in a previous tutorial. Pretty cool. And I got some UST. Uh, you can also install this in Brave. So here's my Brave browser. And if I want to install TerraStation on Brave, it's exactly the same process. I'm going to add to Brave, add extension. And now if I click on here, let's call that up. It's going well. So now I want to set up a new wallet because that's what you need to do. And you can put a, a wallet name in. So we'll call this Terra Brave and then give it a password, something like that. Ah, my password doesn't match. It's a good day today. Somehow we've picked up on a Monday with all the hangovers from the last week. Ah, crazy. And we have the seed phrase here, which we can copy. And this is a, I don't know how many words that is, but it's a, it's a bunch of different words. Write those down. Make sure you have a copy of those. Because if you lose them, then you lose your wallet and nobody wants to do that. So that seed phrase, if you ever have to reinstall or recover your wallet, that is what you're going to need. If you're familiar with ETH and MetaMask and just looking after your own private keys, this will be very familiar. If this is the first time, just write it down and make sure you put in place a system that only works for you, that if anything happens, you know where to get it. For instance, you could have it on a USB key and have a duplicate on another USB key, or you might write it down, or you might memorize it, or you might have it engraved on titanium disks that you bury in a vault somewhere in Norway. Um, people do that. Or you could have it etched onto a diamond and then embed that diamond into a wedding ring. Some people have also done that. Or you could put it on a, I don't know, it's up to you, but have some system that is foolproof that only works for you. So that is how we do TerraStation. I'm not going to go through the entire process because I've already done it. Same thing for MetaMask. Um, if you want to install MetaMask, add it to Brave, add extension, and you'll go through exactly the same process. And MetaMask will allow you to have an Ethereum address that is what we're going to use to bridge assets from ETH to Terra. So, I'm going to just jump ahead and assume that you, brave soul that you are, have understood how to get the C phrase, write it down, and have your wallet set up. So, jumping ahead, what we have now is we have a MetaMask ETH address, and that has an address. You can look at that address on Etherscan. That is you. That is where your funds are going to go. And same thing for a Terra address. Here it is. And you'll notice that the 
The Terra address starts with T-E-R-R-A, nice and handy. And an ETH address always starts with OX. And if you send Ethereum assets from your OX address to that Terra address, they're going to be lost in space and time. Don't do that, except using the method I'm going to show you now. So now, what do we want to do? We want to get hold of some UST, which is the fuel that's going to power our savings experiments. And UST is a stable coin. It represents a dollar. The very unique and unusual way in which they retain that peg. Not something I want to go into now. Stable coins are an entire world uh, all unto themselves. And there's so many different ways that that happens. But essentially, there is a peg of $1. UST, one UST should represent $1. It isn't always exactly that, but it's close enough that if you factor your USD savings in UST one for one, you should be okay. So now we're gonna to go to eth.mirror.finance. And right here, we've got connect. I'm gonna connect MetaMask. And now my MetaMask is plugged into this website. And here I'll be able to look on my page and look at what I have. Now, I already had some UST, some Terra USD, in my account here, uh, which I'm going to basically use for this tutorial. But if we go back to the eth.mirror.finance page, and we can, it says, where do I buy UST? Because at some point, we have to get hold of this UST. So we can get it on Uniswap. We can get it on KuCoin. KuCoin is a centralized exchange. Uniswap is a decentralized exchange. More and more people are starting to use decentralized exchanges because there's no KYC involved. You don't need permission. It's very, very simple to just to go to the Uniswap website, your wallet's connected, and then you can swap one thing for another. Now, I'm not going to go into doing a Uniswap transaction in the Uniswap swap here because that really is for another tutorial. But suffice it to say, Uniswap makes it very, very easy to swap from, say, ETH in this instance to UST. You will be subject to the usual set of fees that are accompanying any transaction on ETH. Now, normally what happens in these tutorials, I end up spending $300, $400 in fees, and I'm not gonna do that today because I already have the UST. But just be aware that that is a cost that will be incurred up front. So obviously, the bigger amount of USD you wanna do up front, the better it's going to be. Um, but for this instance, uh, let's just say we can check it out. Let's just say I wanna do 0.05 ETH to UST, it's going to tell me, let's just go ahead and look at the swap. Uh, yeah, easy enough, but I don't want to do that. I spend so much on fees for these tutorials. So let's assume that I now have bought some UST. If I now go back to the east.mario.finance page, go to my page, there is 19 Terra USD sitting there in my page. So this is UST represented on the Ethereum blockchain that is sitting uh, visible on eth.mirror.finance, which is the Terra, this is the ETH side of the bridge for, for Terra assets. Now, see this blue circle with the three dots here? If you click on it, you've got one button, one option, but it's all the option we need, which is send. So in this send tab, we can send the UST from eth.mirror.finance to either an Ethereum address, or we can send it to a Terra address. And in this instance, we want to send it to a Terra address, which is the wallet we set up earlier. So if I now click on this uh, Terra station ex uh, browser extension, and I click on the wallet name up here, I can copy the address, paste that in here. And what this is going to do if I just, I'm going to send just $15. So what this is going to do now is it's going to send my UST from my OX address on Ethereum to my Terra address on Terra. And that's it. So now it's going to pop up a MetaMask window and it's going to tell me, as it does here, that the cost of sending $15 is $7.93. That is a cost of nearly 50% of the upfront collateral. That is the cost of doing business on Ethereum. Like in the overall scheme of things, $8 for a transaction is not that much on Ethereum, relatively speaking. But still, 
crazy. And that's why we want to do our work on, on Terra, because Terra is just a lot faster and a lot cheaper, and we have these exciting DeFi products to use on there. I'm not going to do this swap right now because I don't need to, because I've already swapped assets over there. And to be honest, I'm fed up of pay paying $8 for a transaction. But, like I said, if you were to send you know, $1,000 or $10,000, it would still be $8. So, relatively speaking, not such a high cost. And I think the benefits of being on Terra vastly outweigh that single problematic gas fee up front. So I'm going to reject that and let that go. Let's imagine that is now winging its way through the ether to my mirror account. So if I now go to terra.mirror.finance, I'm going to do the same thing I did on the ETH side of the bridge and connect my Terra Station wallet. It will now tell me that I have 34 UST. So I'm just going to imagine that I sent my uh, UST from the ETH side to the mirror side. Now, Bear in mind that a bridge, bridging assets between one protocol and another, is quite a complicated thing. It involves a lot of kind of plumbing and mechanics. There's a lot of questions about trustlessness and permissionlessness. But it's a, the ease with which you can do this is fantastic. And that is exactly how it should be. Now, I realize that I've been speaking a lot about the different pieces of this and where you should go and what you're doing. And all of that will get a lot easier. But effectively, you just have to think about having a, like an airport, like a, you know, a departure point on one protocol uh, and an airport on another where you will receive things. That's effectively what's going on here. And the nicer the airport, the more time you're going to want to spend there. So now we're on the Terra side, terra.mirror.finance. I can look uh, at my wallet and I can see my assets. I'm not going to go into this in too much detail, but if I go to my page, It'll show you my holdings. And I've got some MLSLV. And I've got, as I know, in the wallet, 34 UST. Exciting stuff. Now we're ready to get busy. Or not busy, depending on how you look at it. So now if I go to app.anchorprotocol.com, or if you want to get there via the Anchor Protocol page, you just go up to the web app up here. Get rid of these. So now we're confronted with this really simple UX. Really, really simple UX. Total deposit and interest rate and transaction history. And what we want to do is just want to click on deposit, but we can't because we haven't connected our wallet yet. So connect your wallet, connect really fast, and now it's telling me I've got 34 UST, which I can do something with. Now I can click on deposit. The max I could deposit is $32, so I'll do $32. And the transaction fee is going to be 60, 0.658 UST, so that's 65 cents to deposit 32 bucks. And I suspect that that fee would probably be the same whether you're doing a million dollars or whether you're doing $5. So there's a big difference between that and the $8 that we spent on the Ethereum side of things. And the light's gone off. Hey, you know what? We're just going to roll with it. We're just going to roll with it and keep going because I don't need light. I'm getting all the light I need from the screens because they're very expensive screens. <laughs> it's lovely having an audience for these tutorials. Like Daniel behind the, car the camera is just cracking up now. It's like, what, dude, why are you talking to me? He's, his fingers hovering over the... No, stop. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. We're almost done. Uh, we need to get some new batteries for those lights today. So we're going to just carry on with this... Um, like 66 cents, it's not nothing, but it's a great deal better than $7 or $8. And we just click proceed. And I need to put my, I don't even know if I can remember what the password is. Let's see. So I'll have to put the password in to confirm the transaction. It's exactly the same as it is on MetaMask. And just hope that that works. That has worked. It's broadcast the transaction. And as you can see, that all happened really fast. Like really fast. If we'd done the same thing um, on Uniswap, for instance, we've been waiting for a long time. I normally have to turn the camera off when we do an Ethereum transaction with Terra. And let's be honest here, there's a bunch of other layer ones that are also fantastically fast and fantastically cheap. These things are so quick and simple. It's actually kind of fun. And so let's have a look at the confirmation page here, which will tell us 
something that you might be confused about. So we deposited UST, and we deposited 32 UST, and the amount we received was 31.904189 AUST. Huh? What's AUST? And why am I not getting the same exchange rate? Well, AUST is simply the token that represents the staked or savings capital that you've put in. It's not the same token. And that's effective because it needs to be that token in order to receive the interest rates that are coming your way. But it, effectively, it is UST. It's just wrapped differently. So nothing to worry about there. You just now have a different token called AUST. And now, if I look at the dashboard, it says I've got 32 UST sitting in there. And now, what do you do? Absolutely nothing. You just sit and wait for the money printer to keep printing those juicy savings. 22%. That's it. And when you want to withdraw, you can just click on the withdraw tab. But what I love about this is the withdrawal will probably be just as cheap, about 60, 60 cents. And if you scale this up, if you think about you know, real and proper savings, if you can squirrel away 50, 100 bucks a month and put it in here, that's going to do so much more for you than simply, you know, getting screwed by like 0.3% or 0.03% on traditional savings accounts from the banks. Now, why is this important? Well, if Anchor does this, and it's successful, which it looks like it is going to be successful at the moment. There's, um, I think, when we looked at how much money was going in, it was like something like $107 million has been placed into Anchor, which is not huge, but it's still a chunk, and it's going to grow. If Anchor can pull this off and make it successful, then other people will copy it, because that's always what happens. If you look at what happened with Uniswap, SushiSwap, People clone things that are successful and do their own versions of it, and then they tweak the incentives to make them more attractive and less attractive. It's great for consumers because it means there's more competition. That means better products, more innovative products. So I see this as being the first, but by no means the last. And I would firmly expect to see similar kinds of savings accounts pop up on the likes of Solana, on the likes of hash graph on the like, you know, on, on Polkadot. I, th this is going to be popping up everywhere. And so if you have assets native to those chains already, then there's going to be so much more you can do with them. But definitely from a savings point of view, from a consumer point of view, things are about to get really exciting. 20%. Wow. So I hope that was useful. Uh, it was probably the most detailed tutorial we've done so far. Let us know if that's the kind of tutorial you want to see from us. And till next time, happy savings, y'all. Ciao.